Hey guys, it's Bella and welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas Eve or Happy Christmas Eve Eve for some of you guys because people are in different time zones. <laughs> I still have two more videos left of my 12 days of Christmas and then it's all over and I'm so sad because I have enjoyed doing these so much. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed them as well. So in today's video we're going to be talking about the disappearance of Caitlin Akins and this case is really sketchy because there's a lot of things that happened that I guess can't really be explained. So Caitlin was just 19 years old when she disappeared on the 5th of December in 2015 from Virginia. She was born on the 2nd of December in 1996 and she was described as just this really compassionate, just loving, caring girl. She wanted everyone to feel good. She wanted to make everyone feel good about themselves and make everyone happy. And she was really smart as well. Like graduated two years early from high school smart. And she was very, very close to her family. Kaylin lived in Arizona, but her family lived in Virginia because she actually moved to Arizona um, to be with her fiance, a woman named Amber Rios. And they actually met when they were in school, when they were just little kids and they were really, really close. And then Amber moved away when they were 11 and they were so close that they stayed in contact, which is crazy to me because I don't even talk to people from high school, let alone like people from when I moved away when I was 11 years old. Like that is some dedication right there. But eventually their friendship turned into a romantic relationship. And then when Caitlin was 18, she moved to Arizona to be with Amber and they got engaged shortly after. So because she lived like not with her family, she was constantly texting them like every single day, all hours of the day. She would call them like three times a day, even more sometimes, just about random little things. Like she would say, she would see something interesting on the street and then call them to tell them or she would have a question. So she would call them to ask them, like just obsessed with her family. And she was particularly close with her mother, Lisa and her sister, Gabby. And shortly after she moved, her sister, Gabby actually fell pregnant and she was ecstatic like she was so excited she loved children and when she was younger she actually wanted to be a head start teacher because when she was four she was actually went to one of these programs for low-income preschoolers and Head Start is basically like a federally funded program which provides early childhood education, healthcare and nutrition for impoverished youth. So yeah, she loved kids and her and her sister Gabby were super close and growing up they always talked about their futures and like their families they would have and how many babies they dreamed of having. So when Gabby was pregnant it was super exciting for her and she gave birth on the 21st of November in 2015 and mum called her right away and was like organizing to book her flights for her to come in and visit and see the baby hold her nephew and they booked the first flight or her flight to Virginia for the 1st of December and the flight home for the 5th of December. She got in like kind of late afternoon on the 1st of December and her mother Lisa, her mother's sister Pamela and Pamela's husband all went to pick her up and as soon as they got in they went straight to Gabby's house so that she could see her nephew. They got to Gabby's kind of late because the airport was like over an hour away um, but they just had to go straight there because she was so excited and she had some really exciting news for her family as well. She told them that she was going to be going to cosmetology school. She had to get her diploma while she was there because it was at her mum's house and she needed it to finish the enrollment process. So cosmetology school was due to start on the Monday. She was actually meant to stay until the 7th, which was the Monday, but because of cosmetology school starting that day, she had to go home on the 5th, which was a Saturday. Um, she loved like playing with her hair, experimenting with her hair, changing the color, dyeing it, cutting it. Um, she loved braiding people's hairs, especially when she was younger. Like it was a really exciting thing for her because she loved it and she loved making people happy as well. And makeovers definitely make people happy. I feel like they make you feel good about yourself. And when you get a haircut, you are really feeling yourself. So she was just really looking forward to it. So during her trip, she was trying to see all of her family. She wanted to see some friends as well because she'd been gone for over a year. So she was, 
you know, trying to catch up with everyone. And on the 4th of December, so the day before she was due to leave, she went to go and visit one of her friends and that friend's boyfriend. I think at some point on her trip, she visited her friend Kevin because um, he was like her closest friend. Um, but yeah, on the 4th, she went to visit this friend and this friend's boyfriend and she stayed the night and then the next day in the morning, she went home um, the day that she was due to leave, so on the 5th of December. And her flight wasn't until 5.40 p.m., but her mother Lisa had work, so she got in contact with her ex-husband and asked him if he could take her. His name was James Barden and he was Caitlin's ex-stepfather, but he was still kind of in the girls' lives because... Caitlin's father actually left when she was three years old so he was kind of like a father figure to her and he still helped out where he could. He was really protective of the girls so even when he and Lisa split he still stayed in the girls lives and he said that it was fine he could drive her to the airport so at around 8.30 to 9. Lisa dropped Caitlin off at James's house on Oakcrest Drive, which was in Portlow, and they were kind of just sitting on the couch having a chat. He was, t She was telling him about cosmetology school and how excited she was, and just before Lisa left, she kind of reiterated, you know, what time her flight was, what time they would need to leave, because like I said, the airport was over an hour away, and James told her that he had work at 3 p.m., so they would have to leave a little before 1 p.m so that they could get there in time and then he could get like back to work which Caitlin said was totally fine because she was just thankful to have a lift because she had no other way of getting there so it didn't really matter if she had to wait a little while and like she would only be there for a few hours anyway because if they left at one like they weren't going to get there till after two because it was at I think it was called Ronald Reagan Washington Airport and this was over a hundred kilometers away or just about a hundred kilometers I think it was like 98 kilometers to be exact away from Portlow, from his house. Now, here's where things start to get a little bit sketchy. At 11.52 a.m., she texts her fiance, Amber, and she said, something came up, I'm not gonna be able to come home today. And then she sent another message, which said, I won't be able to text for a bit. Then at 1.52 p.m., James texts Lisa, saying that he dropped Caitlin off, no worries, and Lisa texts him and said, how was the traffic? He said it was fine nothing much. Then eight minutes later, she gets a text from Caitlin and Caitlin said that she was at the airport and um, her phone battery was going to die. So she won't be able to text for a bit. And Lisa said, okay, no problem. Just text me when you're about to board. Then at some point after that, Amber gets a text from Caitlin, which says that there was something wrong with her flight and she'll have to get another one. And Amber thought this was a little bit weird. So she messaged Lisa and asked her if she knew what was going on with the flights and Lisa started to get worried because she hadn't heard anything about it. Caitlin hadn't texted her and there weren't any other flights that day. So she tried to get into contact with Caitlin but her phone was ringing out and she wasn't like replying to any texts and then she tried to you know, get the family members to try and call her, but the phone was just ringing out and nobody could get a hold of her. She also tried to call the airline, see what was going on, and they said everything was fine, so then she tried to get them to do an announcement over the speaker, which brought up nothing. So she got into contact with James because he was obviously the last one to see her and she wanted to know if anything was... seemed off while he was driving her there, if she said anything, if she got to the airport safe, which is when he told her he didn't actually drop her off to the airport, he dropped her off at a place called Springfield Mall, which straight up, this was sus. He said that Caitlin had asked him to drop her there and that she said that she would just catch the metro after because it was only a couple stops away and it really wasn't that far. The thing is, and the problem with this is that she didn't know about this mall. How would she have known about this mall? It was so far away from her house, from where she lived when she was there. Like, she'd never been there before. And on top of that, she hadn't caught the metro since she was six years old. Now, a few hours later, at 7.15, Lisa receives two separate texts from Caitlin. And the first one says that she was staying with a friend and then straight after that, she said, I need some time alone. And straight away, Lisa was freaked out because, you know, they liked texted all the time, all day, every day. So they're going to know each other's texting mannerisms. Like I'm sure, you know, you guys know what your friends text like or what your mum texts like and 
how they spell words and punctuate and how they send the messages, which, okay, I need to relax because that's a lot, but like, you know, you know how they text, you know how this person speaks and writes certain words and stuff. And she said, Lisa said that Caitlin never, ever, ever, ever double texted. She hated people that did that. She would always send everything in one text. So then Lisa replied and she said, call me. I'm very worried about you. Please call me. And at around the same time, Caitlin messaged Amber on Facebook and said, I can't come back. I cheated on you. Now, Amber straight up thought this was weird. Like they hadn't had any tension. They didn't have any fights. Like everything was all good at home. And she was excited. Like her family said she was excited to get back to Amber and she was excited to go back and start cosmetology school. So it was just so crazy that they had literally seen her that day and then all of a sudden it's like this complete 180 and she's acting totally different and everything was so fine before. So Lisa tried to call her, the family tried to call her, text her, but she wasn't answering any texts. Her phone was ringing out until eventually they stopped being able to call her. Like the phone didn't ring and the texts weren't delivering. They were freaking out at this point. They tried to call the police and the police were basically like, you need to relax, she's a teenager. She probably just wants some space. But by the 7th, so the Monday, nobody had heard from her. So Lisa went down to the Spotsville County Police Department to file a missing persons report. And while she was there filling out the forms, a police officer came to her and told her that they had found Caitlin's suitcase in the... It was found by a road crew worker in a drainage ditch in the... 6600 block of River Road near Fredericksburg, which was like 44 miles or 80 kilometers away from the Springfield Metro Station and then 30 kilometers away from James's house in Portlow. Detective Rob Marshall said that there was a wheel missing and that there was like scuff marks all over it, which was an indication that it had tumbled and they theorized that it had been thrown out of a moving vehicle just because of the way that it looked. Now inside the suitcase, they found her wallet, her ID, her debit cards, her plane ticket home, but what was missing was all of her clothes and her diploma. And the rest of it was kind of all packed in super neatly. Not long after they found the suitcase, detectives got a call that they had found a body just a few miles away from the suitcase. And at first, people thought that this was Kaylin because it was a 20 year old girl, she had blonde hair, she had tattoos, and this person had been shot to death. But this body was shortly identified as a girl named Heather Caccioni. But because they, you know, were blonde, 20, had tattoos, they had similar descriptions, people thought that maybe they were connected and that maybe something had happened to Caitlyn as well and that maybe there was like a serial killer and that they would find Caitlyn's body soon. But this theory has been completely ruled out. There is absolutely no connection between the two girls. So anyway, police started to look around they started to search around the area that the suitcase were found because it was so weird like the fact that her wallet was there there was money in it her cards were there her plane ticket all of that was in there but her diploma and her clothes were gone like that is like so bizarre. They searched within a 30 mile radius of the suitcase, they searched in creeks, they used helicopters, they searched with like heat sensors but they didn't find anything like Zilch. So then they decided to check surveillance footage from the mall, from the metro station, and from the airport. And none of these showed Caitlyn, they didn't show James, and they didn't show James's car. I did read that two days after Caitlyn's disappearance, the apparently the surveillance footage corroborated James's story. Uh, ABC7 came out and said the Spotsylvania Sheriff's Department investigators came out and said that there were cameras that corroborated his story, basically. Stephen Toshida, who was an anchor with ABC7, came out, wrote some tweets saying basically that the stepfather wasn't a suspect and the surveillance footage, again, corroborates what he has said. It wasn't actually until December of 2016 that it was reported that there was absolutely no 
indication of Caitlyn, James or James's car anywhere on the surveillance footage. So the next step was to pull their phone records. So they pinged Caitlyn's and James's phone records to see where they were pinging, what locations they were when they were sending the text. And this definitely did not corroborate James's story. So at 1.52 p.m. when she texted Lisa saying that she was at the mall, she was actually, I think it was 30 miles away from the mall and she was like, in the vicinity of or in the area of James's home. When James messaged Lisa saying that he had dropped Caitlin off at the airport, his phone actually pinged closer to his home as well. And when Lisa received Caitlin's final text, it pinged at a tower that was about 15 miles from where the luggage was found in a place called Stafford. So it was believed that she actually never left the area where James's house was. Her phone pinged at Fredericksburg, it pinged at Spotsylvania and it also pinged at Stafford and Stafford was as far as the phone got from James's home. So James was looking sus at this point which was weird because up until this point he had been so cooperative, he spoke to police, he was super forthcoming, he was really really helpful, um, they actually asked him to do a polygraph test which he agreed to and they set it up for December 29th, but then at some point after Christmas he cancelled the polygraph test and just fully switched, like did a 180. He said that he didn't like that they were looking at him as a suspect and he hung up on them and he refused to talk to them and still to this day he will not talk to them. So authorities decided to get a search warrant for his home, the area surrounding his home and his car and this search went on for eight hours. They were super thorough, they took his towels, his bedding, they took all of his electronics and nothing. Zilch, zero came of it. And just a little side note here, he actually had another property which police never searched. I don't know if they couldn't get a search warrant or they just didn't decide to search it, but I read somewhere that he did have another property and that they didn't search the other property. So anyway, um, they also decided to question his employer because he was meant to go into work at 3 p.m. the day that Caitlin disappeared. And it turns out he never went into work. And not only did he not go into work that day, but he never went into work again. His phone had like massive security on it, so they couldn't get into it. They could not crack his phone. They still to this day have not gotten into his phone, so they don't know what's on there. So obviously he was pretty good with technology, which just kind of makes me wonder if he could have manipulated the, like, places that her phone was pinging from, but we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to theories. So he just totally stopped cooperating. He was so sketchy and Lisa was super frustrated. She went and confronted him and he just outright refused to talk to her. He would not say a single word to her and still has not spoken to her. Also something I found really odd is that he never asked for any of his stuff back, never got any of his electronics back, he never got any of his bedding, his towels back, nothing. So investigators started talking to people around her, they started talking to her friends, her family, and they spoke to the two people that she saw the night before she disappeared, that she stayed with, the friend and the friend's boyfriend. And when they questioned them, they actually turns out that they all got really drunk, they were partying, and they ended up having a threesome. The next day, they all regretted it like so badly and they all felt kind of weird. The next day, the boyfriend actually ended up leaving work because he just like felt so shitty the next day about it. And when he came home, Caitlin was still there and they kind of went on a walk together, which they didn't really talk at all. Caitlin felt super uncomfortable and just super shitty because not only was it kind of a weird situation, but she cheated on her fiance. So after they got back, not really talking, she went home to her family, which is when Lisa went and dropped her off at James's house. Now, they also decided to talk to her closest friend, Kevin Eastridge, which I talked about earlier. We were dating once. We dated once, yeah. And I'd known prior that um, her and Amber had had feelings toward each other, 
I was like, well, who am I to, you know, stand in the way of that? He said that she had texted him saying that she needed someone to talk to and basically said that these two had forced themselves on her. So she said that she was at their house and then the like girl's boyfriend kissed her and then all of a sudden her friend kissed her and then it was kind of weird and nothing really happened. They went back to playing a card game and then later on in the night they were sitting in front of the TV watching a movie, but there wasn't really any space. So they were kind of like all sitting in each other's laps. One thing led to another, the couple started touching her and kissing her and they all ended up having sex. She said that after they all had sex, she went to bed and cried and she was crying all the next day. And it was a little awkward, but you know, they were all fine. They sorted it out. They're all like, they were all still friends. They were all good, no bad blood, no like awkwardness. like. I mean, I guess it was a little bit awkward, but it wasn't anything like serious, you know? Um, it wasn't like the reason that she was crying is because she felt so bad about the fact that she had cheated on Amber and she texted him saying that she fucked up and the friends weren't really suspects or anything because they were super cooperative, super open, super forthcoming. And, uh, you know, I guess it was a little awkward, but even Caitlin herself told Kevin that it was totally fine and they were all fine. Now, Kevin also said some really weird things about James. He said that James was actually abusive and Caitlin had told him on multiple occasions about different incidents that had happened when he had verbally abused her. And there was no like evidence to say that he physically abused her. Nobody said that he physically abused her, but Kevin said there was definitely some verbal abuse. I think Amber also talked about a couple of occasions where Caitlin had told her a few incidences where James did verbally abuse her, um, apparently, and I don't know if this is true, but apparently Kevin said that James didn't agree with her lifestyle and her sexual orientation. Okay, so let's talk about some theories. Now, the first theory is that Caitlin left on her own. So something that I didn't mention when I was telling you all of the evidence is that they actually found another message of her on Facebook to a friend where she said she didn't want to be in Virginia, but she also didn't want to be in Arizona and that she didn't, she wasn't happy. So it definitely did indicate that she was conflicted and confused and unhappy. They also found an encrypted texting app on her phone that they couldn't get into. They don't know what's in it, but it's possible that maybe she had met someone and she was talking to them on this app and maybe she decided to run away with them. Maybe she decided to leave because of how guilty she felt about ch cheating on Amber. Maybe she felt like she couldn't face her. It could definitely explain why she took her clothes and her diploma considering maybe she wanted to go and start a new life with someone else or maybe she just wanted to go and start a new life because she couldn't face her family after what she'd done and her fiance. So she decided to start another life somewhere else and that's why she took her diploma because she still wanted to go to cosmet cosmetology school. Maybe she met someone and the reason she didn't bring her wallet and stuff is because she didn't want that to be tracked and this person, you know, could put her up in their home and look after her until she got a job and went to school. Um, I don't know. Considering the text that she sent to Amber, it definitely seems like she was the one sending the text from her phone um, because like who else would know that she cheated on Amber? If it's true that James didn't agree with her sexual orientation, I doubt she would have told him. But also she was really close to her mother, so it would be weird if she told James and didn't tell her mum. Maybe James actually helped her and they worked together on helping her run away. Now, first of all, the whole suitcase situation, this was thrown out of a car, which is what detectives said. And for it to have been thrown out of a car, like you can't lug a suitcase out while you're like driving, you know, you need two hands and to chuck that thing out of a window. So it has to be a separate person that was driving. Maybe James was driving her and she threw the suitcase out of the window herself, or maybe she had been talking to James on this encrypted texting app about running away. Maybe that's why he was so shady to police. Maybe that's why he like put all of this security on his phone. And and maybe that's why he didn't do the polygraph because he didn't want to give her away or give any clues as to where she was because he cared for her and wanted 
to help her start her new life. At the same time though, her family thought that there was no way that she would do this. She was happy, she was excited to go to cosmetology school to get back to Amber. And also like what holds me back from this theory is if she was like still alive somewhere and still had the ability to message people, I just don't think she would be able to hold herself back from contacting her family because she was so close to her mom and her sister and texted them all day every day like that is what makes this series unlikely to me or like the only thing in my head that would make this theory not plausible is just because you know I just I just don't feel like she would run away from them and even if she cheated on Amber like why wouldn't she just break up with her or if she wanted to work things out and be with her and she felt bad about it then why wouldn't she tell her? Also, this theory would explain like why her and James's phones pinged so close together because, or in James's area, because, you know, maybe he was helping her. Now on that same topic of leaving with someone and meeting someone, um, it's possible that she did meet someone and she was talking to them on this encrypted texting app, but maybe, you know, they weren't who she thought they were, maybe they were dangerous. This has happened on multiple occasions, you know, where somebody, you know, gets catfished or I actually read about this case one time where a girl met up with a guy from Tinder and he invited her back to his apartment and then he killed her and he pushed her out of the window. So it definitely is like in the realm of possibility that she met up with someone who didn't have good intentions. I also read that her sister Gabby thinks that this is a possibility. Um, maybe this person was working with James. Maybe James killed her, kidnapped her. I mean, there's so much shadiness around James. His story doesn't add up. He won't talk to authorities. He refused to do a polygraph. His phone is like totally security locked, encrypted and her house never left the like his area where his house was. Not to mention the texts were totally shady. Um, you know, her mum thinks that they didn't come from Caitlyn, so maybe James sent them. Maybe he was trying to cover up what he had done. Maybe she confided in him about what had happened the night before because she just needed to get it off her chest and that's how he knew about the threesome. Now, the only problem that I have with this is that the text, the way that they pinged, it looked like they weren't like close enough in distance to have been sent at such a close amount of time, if that makes sense. So there was eight minutes between James's text and Caitlin's text to Lisa, and they both pinged in distances that were too far away from each other to be able to have like come from the same person. Um, I don't know if maybe he's good with technology, could have changed that, but if he changed it, I feel like he would have made it somewhere further away. Um, I don't know how services work and how pinging works, but maybe they were really close together and they were with different service providers and hers pinged with that tower, his pinged with that tower. I don't really know how it works. Well, actually, my other problem with this is the suitcase as well. If James did this alone, how would he be able to lug the suitcase out of the window? Like he would either need to have someone helping him or Caitlin would have had to lug it out the window. I don't really know how else it could be done. I also don't understand why he would take her clothes and diploma. Um, I was thinking maybe they had blood or something on them, but they were in a suitcase. Like there's just no reason for him to take her clothes or diploma. Caitlin's family 100% believes that James is responsible for her disappearance. I personally 110% think he had something to do with it. Um, I don't think he, it was possible for him to work alone. I don't think it was possible that he sent the texts and I just don't know. Whether he kidnapped her, had some help, or whether he helped her run away, I definitely think that he had something to do with her disappearance. But that is everything that I have for today. I would love to know your thoughts, what theories you believe, if there's any theories you guys thought of that I maybe didn't mention. I would love to hear that in the comments down below. I hope you guys have a very Merry Christmas and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!